Hi guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at object pooling. Now, the main purpose of object pooling is so we don't actually need to instantiate and destroy objects at runtime, or at least not as many as we usually do. And the reason that's a good thing is instantiate and destroy your particularly heavy commands. So in certain games, such as Enter the Gungeon, this is what's known as a bullet hell game. And as you can see by the gameplay on screen, there are hundreds if not thousands of bullets being shot every couple of seconds. So if we were to do this in our games using instantiate and destroy, we would take a huge performance hit. So the way that games like this do it is through object pooling. And I'm going to try and make this as simple as possible because it can get a little bit advanced. You could expand on the final product. But essentially what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to change what's happening currently. Which as you can see over here in the hierarchy, every time one of these bullets spawns, it's just spawning in down at the bottom, moving upwards. When it hits my wall collider, it's being destroyed. But that is actually going to be very detrimental to our game. We don't need to do this. As you can see, we only ever really have a finite number of bullets on screen at once. So there's no sense in creating a new one every time we want to spawn one. And by the end of the video, it's going to look something like this. Just let me swap my code out really quick. You know, if you keep your eye on the hierarchy, everything will look the same in the game view. But to take a look at the hierarchy. If I expand these and carry on, we see we never have more than this set number of bullets, which is going to be giving our game a lot better performance. And the good thing about the system that I'm going to show you how to make is it'll work on any prefab whatsoever. So you'll be able to pool bullets, pickups, anything like that. They're all going to be given their own individual pool. And also, if we don't have an object that's ready to go, we're just going to create a new one on the fly. So we will be doing a little bit of instantiation, but we'll never be destroying anything. So enough of me talking about it. Let me show you how it's done. But first, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. Go check him out on Twitter and on his website. I've got links in the description below. And go and keep track of his latest game that he's got in development. And I also want to thank everyone over on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. Okay, so let me just show you the way that you're probably going to be doing this kind of spawning in your game already. So we take a look at our bullet spawner. We just have some basic input controls over here, but this is the important line. So every time we want to shoot, we're in using the instantiate command, we're instantiating the prefab at its position in a rotation, and we're doing that every time. And then on the flip side of that, on each bullet, every time we enter the wall trigger, we're destroying it. And this is our problem. So let's work on a pooling fix for this. So the first thing we're going to want to do, we're going to want to create two classes. These are going to be a pool, which is going to be an individual item pool. And secondly, we're going to want another script, which is going to be a pooler, which is going to be sort of our master class. So we'll work on the pool first because this is going to be relatively small. So this isn't going to be a mono behavior and we aren't going to need system.collections, nor are we going to need the start and update. So inside here we're going to need two variables and a constructor. So the variables are going to be a public, and we're going to use a stack. You may never have used a stack before, but they are extremely useful. You can think of it as a list, but with extra functionality. And just like a list, it takes in its type, which is going to be game object. And these are going to be all of our inactive game objects inside of our pool. So we'll just set that to a new stack like we would with a list. Next, we're going to want to create a parent game object or a reference to a parent game object. So we'll just call that parent for now. And that's just so we can keep all of our instantiated items in one place. Next, the constructor, which is going to be a public pool. 
that's going to take in a game object which is going to be the parent that we want to assign to this particular pool. So we'll set this dot parent equal to parent. And that is actually it for our pool. So we can go back over and start on our pooler. This is where the real magic happens. Now we want to make this as reusable as possible. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this a static class. So we can call this from anywhere. And to start off, we're only going to need one variable in here. And that's going to be a private static dictionary. The key for this dictionary is going to be a string. It's going to be our object name. And each entry into the dictionary is going to be a pool, the class we've just created. And this is going to be all of our available pools. So we'll call that pools. And again, initialize it as a new dictionary. And inside here, we're only going to actually create two methods. We're going to create a spawn method, which is going to replace our instantiate. And we're also going to create a despawn, which is going to replace our destroy. So we'll just add those in quickly. There'll be a public static void spawn and a public static void despawn. So we'll work on spawn first. So because this has got to replicate instantiate, we're going to pass in a few parameters that are going to mirror our instantiate command. Those are going to be a game object, we'll call that geo, that's going to be our prefab that we want to instantiate. A vector 3, which is going to be the position that we want to instantiate it. And a quaternion, which is going to be the rotation. So nothing too drastically different from a standard instantiate call, as we can see here. Our instantiate is taking in a game object prefab, a vector 3 for the position, and a quaternion for the rotation. So in essence, we're just mirroring that. So what do we want inside spawn? First of all, we just want to create a reference to a game object, and we'll use that if we decide to use an object from our pool rather than instantiate it. Secondly, we want to generate a key. And the way that I'm going to do this, you could do this anyway, you could pass in a key if you like, you could use an enum. The way I'm going to do it, I'm going to make it all automated, and I'm going to create a new string called key. I'm going to set that equal to the game object that we've passed in's name, and I'm going to replace that name. Well, I'm going to replace clone from that name with nothing. And the reason I'm going to do that is because if we passed in a bullet prefab, that would be a name of bullet, but because we've already instantiated it at some point during gameplay, it's going to have that bracket clone on the end of it. And we don't want to do that because if we didn't replace the clone, the first one that we spawned in would create its own pool under bullet, and then the second, third, fourth, any other ones are going to be under the name bullet brackets clone. So this just keeps every one of them inside its own object. Next, we want to interrogate a pools dictionary. So if pools.contains key, and then we'll just pass in the key that we've just created, this means we've already got a pool ready to go. Next, we'll do another if statement. So if pools, and then we'll use a key as its actual key, dot inactive, so a list of, or a stack of inactive objects inside this particular pool, if that count is equal to zero, so we don't currently have any inactive versions of that object ready to be shown, this is where we want to create a new one. And this time we are going to be using instantiate. But once enough have been instantiated, we should have a healthy pool that we can just pull from as and when we like. So to do that, this time we're going to need to use object.instantiate. And the reason we have to do that is because we aren't inheriting from mono behavior. So we need to directly access instantiate through the object class. And we're just going to do it the same way as we always do. We're going to instantiate a game object at the position we've passed in, at the rotation that we've passed in. But this time we're going to append it to that pool's parent object. So that'll be setting the parent to pools with this key dot parent dot transform. 
So that's going to instantiate the object wherever we tell it, but it's going to have a parent which is going to match that object's parent class inside the pool, or parent object inside the pool, rather. So there we go. So far, we're just instantiating as normal. So we'll add an else onto this. So if the count isn't equal to zero, that means we have an object already spawned in, ready to go. So this is where we're going to use our obj, our game object up here. So we're going to set that equal to pools, use the key again, dot inactive, dot pop. Now this is where using a stack comes in really handy, because what dot pop will do is it will take the top element in that stack list and return it, but at the same time it'll also remove it from the stack. Next, now that we've got uh, object reference, we can just set the transform dot position equal to the position that we've passed in, the rotation equal to the rotation that we've passed in, and then we want to set this game object to active. So now the way that we can see this is going to work is once the game object has been instantiated, we're going to set it to active when we want it, and then we're going to set it to inactive when we don't want it anymore. And that's a lot better for performance than instantiating and destroying. So currently we have a code ready to go for if we have a pool ready for that object. But what if we don't? What if it's the first time we've pressed that button, we spawn in a bullet, we're obviously not going to have a pool for it at all. So this is where in the else statement, we can create a brand new pool. And to do that, we're going to first need to create the parent object. So we can create new game object, call that new parent, and set that equal to a new game object. And inside the parentheses, we can actually pass in the name that we want to give to this object. And I'm going to name this whatever our generated key was, underscore pool in capital letters. So if the object that we passed in, that we're trying to create, didn't have a parent, didn't have a pool, we're going to create a new pool object called bullet underscore pool. Next, we're going to want to instantiate the object because obviously we don't have a pool to take it from. So that'll be again, object.instantiate. We're going to instantiate the game object, object at the position, at the rotation. And this time we're going to pass in new parent dot transform as the parent object. Next, we need to create a new pool to add into our dictionary. So that'll be a pool, call that new pool, set that equal to a new pool. And as part of the constructor for a pool, as we can see, we need to pass in the parent object. So again, we'll just pass in new parent there. And the final thing we need to do is add it to our dictionary, which will be pools, uh, dictionary up here dot add we need to pass in the key as the key object and then the new pool that we've just created and that should be a spawn method completed so if we pop down to our despawn again this is going to need to take in a parameter just like destroy does and that's going to be another instance of the game object that we want to in essence destroy and i'm just going to copy this because we're also going to need that key in here as well and this is going to be quite similar to the spawn method, just in reverse. So if our pools dot contains key, key, then we can just add this game object to that pool. So we'll get pools use the key dot inactive, and this time we want to use dot push. Now dot push is going to do the opposite of dot pop. This is going to add to the inactive stack and it's going to put it back at the top and then we'll just pass in that game object and then we're going to want to set that game object to inactive so set active false and just to keep things clean what i like to do whenever we despawn an object i like to set its transform.position equal to pools dot parent dot transform dot position that way say for example we have 100 objects in we have 100 bullets and they're all deactivated so we're not shooting at all 
although they'd be inactive, they'd be all over the map, and I don't really like that. Obviously, when you're playing the game, you can't really tell, but I know, and it really bothers me, so I just like to set it to the parent transform, so we just have a nice little pile of them over somewhere in our game. And the final thing that we need to do, we need to cater for us despawning an object that doesn't have a pool. So that'll be inside of our else statement, and we're going to create a new parent object, just like we did during our spawn. We're also going to create a new pool, call that new pool, set that equal to new pool and pass in our new parent like we did in the spawn method. Next we're going to set our game objects dot transform and then we're going to do set parent. Then we'll pass in new parent dot transform. So because the object that was already in the game didn't have pool, it mustn't have a parent. So now we're going to set that game object's parent to be inside the pool. Just so when we start using it, like I said before, they're all kept in the same little area. And finally, we need to add it to the pool. So that'll be pools.add. Use the key as the key. And use the new pool as the pool object. Grab a new pool using the key dot inactive dot push so we'll put that game object into the stack and then finally set that object to inactive and that should be a pooler script completed so the only thing left to do now is replace our instantiates and our destroys with spawn and despawn so inside of our bullet spawner wherever we're instantiating what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to copy that, just for ease. But now all we need to do is call pooler.spawn, and then we'll pass in exactly the same parameters as we did to our instantiates. And then exactly the same down for the red bullet, which is going to create its own instance. So that'll be pooler.spawn, the red bullet this time. And then inside of our bullet script, instead of destroying, we want to call pooler.despawn game object, exactly like we'd call destroy. So now if we go back to our game, we should see. If we were to press the A key, that's the key that I'm using to spawn my yellow bullets, we get a bullet pool with one bullet in there. If I press D, which is my red bullet pooler, I get a red bullet pool with another game object under there called red bullet. Now if I was to press A and D again once, we're going to reuse that game object. It's going to set itself to active and move back down to the bottom where we want it to spawn. But now, for example, if I press A twice, we only have one bullet, but the way that we've created this system is it's going to use that bullet and then instantiate a new one only if it needs one. As you can see there, we had two bullets, and now we've got two bullets inside of our pool. Same for the red. And then if we just hold this key down, we're going to instantiate new bullets until we don't need them anymore. And then it's just going to pick and choose from that bullet pool, set them to active, and then deactivate them again, and then the same for the red. So I really hope you've learned something with this. I hope to see you using this in your games in the near future. If you do end up using this, please drop me a comment below. Let me know what you used it for. Let me know what you were pooling. Let me know if you found anything wrong with it, actually. Like I said, this could be made better. It could be expanded on. But this is a really good starter for you. So with that, I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more bites as Unity hints and tips.